Hi, anatomy lovers. We are moving right along in the skeletal system. Today's topic is bone anatomy. So we're going to be focusing on osteons and long bones. All right, so types of bone. This is a review. I've already mentioned it a few times, so you should be experts at this point. So compact bone, it's about 80% of our skeleton. It's smooth, it's white, it's solid, it's strong, but it protects the all important spongy bone inside. Now spongy bone is only about 20% of our skeleton, but it is vascularized, which means it has a good blood flow, okay? It's porous, okay, which means there are open spaces and it contains our red bone marrow, okay? It helps to make our skeleton lighter. So again, the two work together, both important. There are three main types of bone cells. Osteocytes, those are the mature bone cells. They're going to monitor the mineral content in the matrix and uh, make adjustments as necessary. The osteoblasts, B, are the bone builders. Osteoblasts are the builders, and they build new bone. And osteoclasts are the cleaners. They break down bone. You, when we need to remodel or release calcium, okay? So if you aren't getting enough calcium in your diet, your osteoclasts are gonna break down some bone to get calcium. Now, over our lifetime, we constantly remodel our skeleton. Remember every seven to 10 years, you have a new skeleton. So our osteoclasts and osteoblasts are always working together to maintain our skeleton. All right, now let's talk about the microscopic anatomy. We have osteons. Osteon is a unit of bone. Okay? In the center of the osteon is the central canal, and it's an opening for nerves and blood vessels. That's why when you fracture a bone, it hurts. We have all these nerves running through the osteons, and it also bleeds because they're also filled with blood vessels. And then we have perforating canals. So here we have the central canal like this, and then we have perforating canals, and they are perpendicular to that central canal, and they bring nerves and blood vessels in that direction. Okay, so here you can see central canals with blood vessels and nerves, and perforating canals in a perpendicular direction, and then individual osteon units. And you have a lot of osteons together that then make the long bone. And that's really what gives it strength. So instead of having one, we have a whole bunch of them together. Again, here's the osteon um, that we were just talking about. And you'll see some new words that we're about to talk about. So lacuna or lacunae, okay? It's the cavity with osteocytes in it. And it's arranged in rings. Okay, so remember that osteon was the unit, and in the picture we saw it looked like rings, like tree rings. Well, those spaces are lacuna or lacunae. Okay, then we have lamella, and those are the rings, okay, and we have the open spaces in them. So the lamella are the rings, and there are spaces in those rings. The spaces are the lacunae. And then we have canaliculi. It's a good word. They're tiny little canals that go from the central canal to that open space. Why does it need to go to that open space in the ring? Because that open space houses the osteocyte, which helps to keep the bone functioning correctly. So here in this diagram, you can see we have lamella, which are the rings. And then you have lacunae, the spaces between those rings, and in those spaces, we have osteocytes, okay? Lamella, 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 in between, lacunae with osteocytes, and then here's the central canal. Okay, here's just another illustration. Again, you can see the long bone is made up of osteon, 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 and that helps to give it durability and strength. And here, if you look at slides of bone, you can see even in um, these diagrams, you can see clearly the rings, the lamella with the lacunae and the osteocytes inside. All right, now what about long bones? Remember clavicle, the bones of your arms, the bones of your hands and feet, and the bones of your legs. All right, so we have main structure. We have the diaphysis. That's the shaft of the bone, the shaft, and it's made up of compact bone. 
Okay. And then we have the epiphysis. Those are the ends. So the ends, E, epiphysis, end epiphysis, end epiphysis. And that is mostly made of spongy bone, but you can clearly see from the picture, it still is surrounded by compact bone. Okay, so now what else? The periosteum. The periosteum is a membrane that covers the diaphysis and it's made of fibrous connective tissue and it has um, some blood supply and um, nerves. And then we have cartilage, which is a connective tissue and it covers the epiphysis. Remember, epiphysis ends, epiphysis ends. So the cartilage covers the epiphysis and when we have bone meeting bone, because they're covered in cartilage, it decreases friction at joints. And remember, because bones are living tissue, if they rub against each other, it creates a great deal of pain. So here you can see the blue, that being the cartilage. You can see the epiphysis, the end, has spongy bone. Then you can see the compact bone continuing into the diaphysis, the shaft. You can see that orange, the periosteum, covering the bone. And then uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but you can see the medullary cavity, and that's what's going to contain the marrow. So here we go, the medullary cavity. It is in the shaft, the diaphysis, and it contains yellow marrow in adults, and it's going to contain red marrow in babies and children, and obviously transitioning um, in between. Now we have something really important. The, um, epiphyseal plate or growth plate. And there's a thin layer of cartilage between the diaphysis and the epiphysis. And it allows our bones to grow longer. That's kind of important because we aren't born with our bones the correct length we need as adults. And the growth rate is con controlled by hormones. Eventually, that growth plate becomes the epiphyseal line, right? Now, the danger is with a fracture, if a child gets a fracture across or through the growth plate, um, the fracture has to be treated very carefully because it could contribute to some growth issues, right? So it's the softest and weakest part of the skeleton. It literally is the weakest link in your long bones. Fractures there can affect growth. The bone could be shorter, the bone could be crooked. Okay, so what is the weakest link in a bone? It's the epiphyseal plate. Okay, and that's it. That's the structure of long bones, the structure of osteons. Hopefully it wasn't too much. And uh, we're going to delve more into the skeletal system. So uh, come back for more lessons.